you welcome back to the todd durkin impact show this is your host todd durkin and i am super fired up today yes i have a very special guest here today that you are gonna absolutely love this conversation why because she is a bona fide superstar now truth be told as a dad as a husband as a family man, as a coach, as a leader, as a, as a life transformer, um, one of the things that most inspires me are my kids. And today, Monique Billings, Monique Billings is our guest, and she talks about a lot of things, including her illustrious WNBA career, her professional basketball career over overseas, which she has lived in. 10 cities in the last five years playing basketball and evangelizing her life and what she does. She's a new author. She's got a book called Finding Balance, a Playbook for Wellness. And there's so many amazing points that I want every every dad, every mom, and every kid to listen to this episode. It is one that's going to inspire. If you're an athlete, listen to this show. If you are someone who's a high performer and wants to be better, listen to this show. She is an old soul. Now, the thing that really struck me the most about Monique Billings, when she talks about her father and her relationship with her dad and why it was so strong. And I literally, literally began to get emotional and tear, teary eyed of just thinking about, man, like the relationship that she had with her father before he passed was absolutely exemplary. And it's one that all of us parents want with our kids. And you're going to hear about it. And I'm really, really excited uh, to share Monique Billings. So I give her a proper due. Take a listen. Monique Billings is a woman who values faith, family, friends, and living life to the fullest. It's no wonder she's been able to balance a thriving WNBA and international pro basketball career while also being a sportscaster, social media influencer, global keynote speaker, and an author. Monique has overcome many obstacles in her climb to the top and has seen many succumb to life's pressures along the way, motivating her to share her strategies to help others overcome as well. In her first book, she shares her insights and perspectives on balancing a busy, high-performing, high-achieving life while keeping yourself as the star player. Turn the pages and find the keys to unlocking the best version of you in her book, Finding Balance, a Playbook for Wellness. My friends, it gives me great pleasure today She's all the way over in Athens, Athens, not Georgia, Athens, Greece. There's a couple little giddy up hitches in the in the connection, but our team is going to do our best to make sure it's nice and smooth. But this girl, it's 10 o'clock at night, literally when she's recording this. It's morning time as I'm recording this. And the commitment that Monique Billings has, man, this conversation is going to just be epic. Without further ado, let's go to Athens, Greece right now on her holdover over to Istanbul, Turkey, the one, the only, the WNBA superstar star who's the se- the queen of self-care monique billings wait just one minute i want to make sure you have your passport if we're going to athens greece yeah athens, not athens georgia all you georgia bulldogs congratulations on your national championship georgia bulldogs on a big win uh this past week uh we're going to athens greece but actually i'm going to be in athens georgia Yes, this weekend for Thank You Fit Body Boot Camp Day of Impact coming up. So two big celebrations in Athens, Georgia this week. The National Championship uh, of the Georgia Bulldogs and the Day of Impact that I'll be doing for the Fit Body Boot Camp. But today we're going to be in Istanbul, Turkey, via going to Athens, Greece with Monique Billings. You know, one of the things I love about the podcast is getting to speak and converse with great people and then sharing the conversation with you. And what I wanted to share right now is when Monique and I were talking, it was just days before that Brittany Griner, her WNBA colleague and cohort was released from a Russian prison. We actually talk about that and my thoughts on Brittany who is uh, imprisoned in Russia And uh, it just so happened that three days after us discussing it and me sharing my strategy and plan on how we could free Brittany Griner, she was released. (laughs) So without further ado, whether you have your passport or not, whether you're going to Athens, Georgia, like me, or you're going to Athens, Greece, like Monique, 
Let's go right now to the conversation where Monique Billings is en route to Athens, Greece. All right, Monique Billings is in the house. Monique, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I am excited. As a matter of fact, this is this is a first. You are recording this from Athens. Athens, yes. Georgia, Athens, Georgia, or Athens, Greece? Definitely not Athens, Georgia. I'm in Athens, Greece. This is literally my favorite place in the whole wide world. I'm going to be spending some time abroad. So um, I'm hitting Istanbul. I'm actually going to be playing there. So yeah, I just wanted to take a, a quick trip to Greece before that. Wait, you're going to be playing in Istanbul, Turkey? Yes, Turkey. When is that start up? I'll be in Istanbul from December to April. Okay. Wow. Wow. So uh, yeah. you're getting rocking and rolling here. So, hey, Greece is on my bucket list. My wife is Greek. Uh, nice. So within the next three years, we're going to have one of these epic trips to, to Greece. So uh, I'm going to have to pick your brains about what you learn in, in Greece. But it's so awesome to have you on the show. And uh, for as I learn more about you and I want to share because our good friend, Teresa Volano said, you got to, you got to talk to Monique Billing. She's making huge rifts in the world, not only in the WNBA, but uh, with what you're doing in the community and inspiring uh, young women and athletes and kids alike. So if no one has followed you and your career with the Atlanta dream, the last, what, five years, uh, and Mm -hmm. someone said, who is Monique Billings? Who is Monique Billings? I would say Monique Billings is a Renaissance woman. I have so many different, yes, I have so many different passions and interests. Like I'm more, more than an athlete, which, you know, has been quoted. Quoted so many times, but that define me. And um, I don't like to be defined by just one thing. So like I said, I'm a Renaissance woman. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> and when you say a renaissance woman, not just an athlete, what are some of the other things that you do besides sport? So I'm actually a broadcaster. I broadcast in my off season because WNBA season is a summer season. So I do broadcasting during like the college season. Last year, I was broadcasting for the Atlanta Hawks. So yeah, I do some broadcasting. Like I said, I make time to travel. I'm in my favorite place in the world. I'm in Athens. Um, a lot of people don't know, but WNBA players will play abroad as well. So I've played in 10 different countries. I've lived in 10 different countries. What? Yes. In the last five years. I did not know that the WNBA players played abroad. Yeah, because a lot of the money that we make comes from playing abroad. You can make some really great money playing overseas. So how would you say 80% of WNBA players play abroad? Probably 90 Maybe 95. 90%. And when you say great money, are we talking five figures, six figures, or seven figures, the top players in the WNBA? Six to seven for sure. And sometimes three times, four times, five times your salary in the WNBA. Interesting. And out of the Mm -hmm. 10 cities that you've lived in the last five years, what would you say are the top two or three? Top two or three. Okay. I played in China, the Qing China. I loved it. Um, Seoul, South Korea was pretty amazing. And surprisingly, I didn't mind. I lived in Orenburg, Russia, and I met some amazing people there and I had a great experience there. And if I'm not mistaken, that's also where you wrote your book. Am I not mistaken? Exactly. That's probably why I had such a great experience. I've done my research, girl. I've done it. I like it. Finding finding balance, right? A playbook for wellness. So you wrote it in Russia. What, like between practice? Oh, there it is. Finding balance between practices and games. You were writing your book. Pretty much. I mean, it's winter. It was winter when I was there. So I wasn't going outside. Um, you know, it's cold and there's not much to do in Orenburg, Russia. I'm sure you can imagine. So yeah, I'd have two practices throughout the day. And then at night I would come home to my apartment and I would just write. And it was actually like a very monastic experience. I enjoyed it. It was, um, it was like therapy, like just, yeah, yeah, it was very therapeutic. So I got to ask you then, because you're familiar with Russia, Russia policy, you've probably been asked a thousand Mm -hmm. times, Bertie Griner, that situation. What, I mean, what's your take on it? I know my heart goes out to my girl um, because I know just how tough it is. And just, you know, having to play abroad to make a living in itself is already 
um, it's tough. It's not easy. And so I just feel for her. My heart goes out for her, praying for her. And I just hope that um, she's able to come home. Mm, amen to that. That's that's mm-hmm. a difficult situation. Um, you yeah. played about five years for the Atlanta Dream. Tell me more about your basketball career. Where did you go to college? Where did you grow up? And, and and I'd like to learn more about that. Yeah, so I've been so blessed. I'm from Southern California, a city called Corona. I went to UCLA, so I stayed home because I'm You're a Cali a Bruin. Girl. You're a Bruin. I am a Bruin. So Fourth it, up, I am a Bruin. Okay, and is John Wooden your favorite coach of all time? I know you didn't obviously ever get to meet him, but like he's legendary everywhere. He's oh. definitely legendary. I would be lying if I said he was my favorite, but he is legendary, and I have so much so much respect for Coach Wooden. Who's your favorite? Ooh, you put me on the hot seat, my. Favorite coach. Okay. My um, high school AAU coach, Brian Crishlow. And mm-hmm. obviously you probably don't know who he is, but Go he ahead. was my favorite coach that I've ever had. He poured so much into me. A lot of who I am today is because of him. Isn't it interesting that a lot of times our favorite coaches are coaches that aren't necessarily famous. It could be a, yeah. a middle school teacher coach or a high school teacher coach who's, who's impacted lives. That's the beautiful thing about exactly. sports or high school sports. And, you know, you get a big name in college or in pros and you get enamored with the name. But a lot of times it's these youth or high school coaches that can make the greatest impact uh, on a life. So that's, that's yep. it. So you went to UCLA and, um, and then get, got drafted to the WNBA from there? Yep. I got drafted in 2018 to the Atlanta dream. I had no idea that I was going to Atlanta because, you know, there's like mock boards and the mock boards had me going to LA. So I'm like, Oh, I get to stay in LA, but ended up going to Atlanta. And it was just such a blessing because now Atlanta is like, that's my home. It's home for me. And so, um, yeah, I had a great career thus far and I pray that I could just continue to play. I love Hotland, by the way. I was just down there recently. Yes. I was in the keynote down there. What what part of town are you in? Like the Lennox Buckhead area where I was at, or where? where, where what part I've lived. Town? I've lived all over, so that's it's been really cool because I've lived in so many different places. But I actually just bought my own house, my first house, and I live in Mableton, which is about twenty minutes north. I know first is house. Alpharetta. Well, I've never even heard of that. No, Alpharetta is really far. Mableton is near Smyrna, <laughs> Marietta. Oh. All right. I got that. you. I got you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 I, I like that. So you're with the dream and yeah. um, tell me more about basketball. What position do you play? So I'm a power forward. I could play positions three through five, really, but mostly four and five. So how tall are you? I'm six, three, six, three. Yes. Six, three. I'm so up you're there. in the paint. You're dropping elbows, dropping the booty exactly. back, you're getting ladies out of the paint. I like this, Monique. I I'm like taking it. the ball at the court too, though. Like I say, I play positionless basketball because that's where the game is going. So well, really one through five is my, I position. haven't, I haven't followed the WNBA as, as much as some other sports, but now I'm going to be not only a fan of the WNBA, I'm going to be a fan of the Atlanta dream because I love the name dream and most yes. importantly, a new fan of Monique Billings. And I'm going to be watching, making sure you're representing out there the way we play the game. So gosh. We're, we're getting you to a game this season. Like for sure. You got to come to a game. I'm, go- I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. And uh, I'm, you're going to hear me. You're, you're going to yep. hear me loud and clear. clear. Like, Get your mind right. Get your mind right. I'll be screaming. Be like, that guy's crazy over there. Yeah, that's I the to interview Monique. Need all that energy. That's perfect. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. What's the favorite? <laughs> what's your favorite part of being a pro basketball player? My favorite part of being a pro basketball player is just being able to kind of create my own schedule. If that makes sense, like you'll have practice. If you're in season, your schedule will kind of different. So I'm out of season right now. I'll get to that. But in practice, in season, so you'll go to practice in the morning. Um, go to treatment, take care of your body. It's only you're there for three to five hours. And then the rest of the day, like you do what you want to do and you're not going to be reckless and, you know, go do a bunch of crazy stuff, but you have time to do things that you want to do. And that's something that I didn't have in college. I was very micromanaged because you're a student athlete. So you're going to school, then you're going to practice and doing all these things. You have um, homework that you have to do. You got to meet with your tutors. You have to try to be social because you're in school. It was all those things, but being a pro, like I love just being able to focus on my sport, focus on my body. Like my job is to take care of my body and I I love it. Like I couldn't ask for anything more. As being one of the top players in the WNBA, what would you attribute your success to besides obviously 
you know, you, you're a talented woman. What would you say are some of the things that you do that allow you to stand out? Ooh, you're asking the great questions. Some of the things I would say that huh, allow me to stand out, I would just say, like I said earlier, being a Renaissance woman, having so many different interests, it's not just basketball for me. And the fact that I'm already tapping into another career, career while I'm still Love playing, it. a lot of people aren't able to do that. So that's Love been a huge blessing for me. Um, becoming an author now, like I just like doing so many different things and I take the time to do it. Um, I think the connections with people that I've made might true. separate me too. But yeah, just being a true Renaissance woman. I'll take a random guess, but I can, I can, I can bet that there are probably no other uh, women in the WNBA that have written books. Am I correct? Are you the first? You're absolutely right. Yeah. A Renaissance Current woman. players. At current, least current, current players. Current players, yeah. So mm -hmm. there's a Renaissance woman right there, a current active pro player who has written a book. And I, I think some of the other things, and I've worked with a lot of athletes who are extremely talented and gifted and and that, but it's one thing to be talented. It's another thing to maximize your potential. And, and when you talk about training and recovery, a lot of people don't see the hours behind the scene between the body work and time in the Norma Tech boots and the nutrition and the the – all of the things that it takes. Um, what so what are some of the, what are the, some of the things that you do off the court that allow you to uh, not only play, but sustain such a high level of performance? Maybe it's recovery or training or, or mindset stuff. What are some of the things that you do? Absolutely. I mean, everyone has to, I feel like people have to really tap into themselves and understand what works for them. But what works for me the best is honestly kind of just stepping away from the game, like taking time away Mm. making sure that I'm um, just balanced, which is the name of my book, Finding Balance. But it's truly that it's um, taking time for myself. It's listening to myself, asking myself, okay, do I feel like if I'm in the off season, do I feel like going to the gym today? Um, do I feel like, I don't know, I need a massage or whatever I might need. Maybe I just need some good food that day and just kind of listening to myself and giving myself what I need in that moment. I feel like that helps me show up as my best self and just be recharged every time I come on the basketball court. I love that you're mentioning this because I've heard you uh, been called the queen of self-care, the queen of self-care. And you keep talking about you, you, your arduous work ethic on the court, in the weight room, in the training room, all of the, you know, yeah. contrast therapy and cold and heat. Da, da, but you're also talking a lot about getting away. And I don't care if it's as a pro athlete or it's as an entrepreneur executive. It's that I call mellow yellow time, time away that allows mm. you to mentally recharge and refresh. Exactly. When you go back on the court, I know that you, I'm going to get to your book in a moment, but I'm, I'm just intrigued about how you're combining your passions, your love of basketball, yeah. um, and and all you do off the court, including travel and living in multiple cities. And th that's the best education of all with the different cultures. Um, when you were growing up as a young girl, who who was your role model? Did you was a role model for you an athlete? Was it uh, a parent? Who was your role model? Um, my role model was Tyra Banks. I idolized Tyra Banks and huh. I thought I was going to be on America's Next Top Model. Obviously, basketball became my my life plan, but I just, like I said, really idolized Tyra Banks. I love how she carried herself. I love just the empire she built around herself. Obviously, being um, a beautiful, Black, educated woman, just seeing her in the spotlight, I'm like, I want to be like that one day. Love that. You're, you're, mm -hmm. you're setting your, your roadmap right now for not only being like Tyra Banks, but being like Monique Billings. There, there are yes. women all over the world right now, not only the country, the world, cities yeah. literally uh, in Asia, Europe, all over that are like, I want to be like Monique when I grow up, which is oh. what an awesome responsibility. Um, I, love, I love hearing that. So let's talk about your book. You came out yeah. with your book, um, November of this past year, 2022, mm -hmm. um, Finding Balance, a playbook for wellness. Talk about it. Tell yeah. me about it. Man, this book is for anyone who's just on their journey of trying to be the highest version of themselves. Mm -hmm. I give keys and tips that have worked for me just literally every single day throughout my journey thus far. Um, things that have worked for me to um, find that balance, to become, like I said, the highest version of myself, to be better than yesterday, not as good as tomorrow. That's my favorite quote. And yeah, I was just inspired to write this book because I'm so passionate about wellness. Like 
when I wake up in the morning, like I feel good. And my, I, I've done, I've been able to do a good job of like, um, feeding my mind and I want other people to learn how to feed their minds. And obviously I'm an athlete. So I kind of, I wrote this from an athlete's perspective and mostly for athletes, but I really feel like anyone could benefit from this book because we should all be trying to strive to be better, to be the best that we can every single day. I want to unpack a few of those things because you just said a lot of great things in that. Um, So this book is for anyone, but specifically athletes. And if you're a female athlete, this is a requirement. This is a must read, must read Women's book, Finding Balance. Um, You Mm -hmm. said a quote that I really liked, and I want to highlight this. I don't want to breeze by it. You said, be better than yesterday, but not as good Mm -hmm. as tomorrow. Talk talk more about Where did you get that? So my dad gave me that quote and shout out to my dad because I wrote this book and um, dedicated it to him. He passed last year from ALS. So this book is dedicated to him because he, everything that I am is because of him and my mom. I got to shout out my mama too, but just the mindset that he instilled in me, he would always tell me mind, body, spirit. And I was young, nine years old. He's telling me mind, body, spirit. He said, be balanced in your mind, your body, and your spirit. And at that time, I didn't understand. I'm like, okay, dad, yeah, yeah, right, whatever. And now being 26, I understand how much every single day I have to be balanced in my mind, my body, my spirit. So being better than yesterday, not as good as tomorrow, it's just constantly striving to be my best. It's knowing that even if today, like I gave my best effort, tomorrow I'm going to be better. That's always the goal. Monique Billings, you, you're a blessing. Wow. You are a Thank blessing. You. So your father, you, you're 26 years old now. Your dad had yes. ALS. How old was he when he passed? Man, he was just shy of 56. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And today is actually his heavenly birthday. So it's been like a very spiritual day for me in a great way. Like I've been listening to his playlist that I made and um, I worked out earlier and that was like our thing. So, you know, it's totally okay. I know that he's in peace and like, I'm a woman of faith. And so my faith has just really helped me through this journey of not having him physically here, but yeah, we, we figure it out. We keep it pushing because that's what he wants me to do. I'm very intrigued. Talk more about two things. Number one, Mm -hmm. From a daughter's perspective, I have a daughter, she's 14. And Mm. as a dad, I'm always like, man, I got three kids. I'm like, okay, you know, how can I be a better dad? The most important thing that we could ever leave our kids is a legacy of that. And um, I'm very intrigued. Number one, what made your dad so special to you? I can tell by the way you just talked about him, what he meant to you. And the fact that we're recording this right now on his heavenly birthday is not a coincidence. I'm intrigued. What made your dad so special? Okay. The first thing I would say that I have a perspective on now, and maybe at 14, I didn't actually for sure at 14, I didn't have this perspective, but he commanded my respect. You know, I knew that I couldn't get away with certain things with Mm. my dad. And now looking back, I'm like, wow, like he raised me in such a way that I learned how to not only respect him, I'll respect whoever the man that I marry one day and also just to respect myself. So I think him just having um, high standards for me, for my younger sister and commanding that respect. I think that was the first thing. And the second, that was like my workout buddy. He got me into basketball when I was five. He asked me if I wanted to play. And I was like, no, I don't really want to play. I've always been super girly and feminine. But he asked me if I wanted to play. I wanted to make him happy. So I tried it out. And here we are 21 years later, still playing. But yeah, he we would work out. He took such great care of himself. Like He was like the healthiest person that I knew. So we would go to the gym together. We would um, just always be working out. And so those, I would say, were the two things um, that gave me that connection with him. And did you ever go through a phase in middle school or high school where you were too cool for school? Like, you know, it, it was all about your social circles and, and your, your parents were cool. Your dad wasn't cool. Yeah. For sure. Okay, Absolutely. I just want to make sure you're and normal. Now, <laughs> man, so normal. So normal. Like I, when I went to college, that's where we, I would say that's when we reconnected because we're so similar. It was very hard for us living in the same house together because we're both like stubborn. So like we would always butt heads, you know? 
But leaving for college, being able to talk to him on the phone and not necessarily have to be in the same room all the time, every single day, I feel like that did us um, some well. But honestly, like I took him for granted, you know, and looking back and him not being here, like I wish when I was 14, I had someone like myself to be able to tell me, like, don't take any of these moments for granted. When, when you were in high school growing up, was it uh, Corona High School, Corona Del Mar or uh, yeah. Centennial? Mm-hmm. And so I went to Santiago, which is actually on the same street as Centennial. Okay. Okay. Just yeah. you know, an hour up the street here from San Diego. Uh, and the reason I ask yeah. it, I'm just curious is, you know, as, as a, a girl growing up who was highly recruited, obviously, if you go to UCLA, um, mm-hmm. you always kept your humility, your faith, and and that I think it's a great thing. Well, as a go back at 14 years old or a high school young girl, knowing now what you know, what would you have changed about your relationship with your father then would you Mm. you have done differently as a high school girl i love that question you yeah hey y'all been hitting me up on this new impact x program thank you thank you and thank you it shows me that there's a lot of people who are looking to level up and and step up into their best self as well as really level up their circle of influence and who they're hanging out with here in 2023 as uh, we are already rocking and rolling uh deep into january so let's keep it on up uh, impact x is all about that how do you level up into your best self how do you increase your accountability and your motivation on a regular basis for the next 12 months yes impact x is a 12-month intensive coaching program that yours truly will be coaching and leading you with another group of eight to 12 high level entrepreneurs, moms, dads. Uh, It's not just fit pros. One of the questions is, do I need to be a fit pro? No, as a matter of fact, that's my Todd Durkin mastermind group, which is for fit pros. This is for those who are not necessarily fit pros on all occupations, careers, and industries who wanna surround themselves with the best people so you can have conversations, strategy sessions, and calls with the group, Impact X, to be your best self. So hit me up if you're interested. It kicks off February 1st. It all starts February 1. Hit me up. I'll send you the information. Go to ToddDurkin.com. DM me. Email me. Durkin at FitnessQuest10.com. And I'll get you all the information. Until next time, Impact X. Let's get back to the show. If I could go back and tell 14-year-old Monique anything with, to, in, with her relationship with her dad, I would tell her just to have a little more grace because he's not perfect mm. and he's trying to figure things out too. Yeah. And it's easy to say that now at 26, because like I've learned to have grace. I've had life experiences that have given me that, but at 14, you don't necessarily have that, but I would just encourage her to cherish the moments because they're not going to last forever. And when you're that age, you think it's going to last forever. You take so much for granted. You don't think about it too much, but just the beautiful experiences that I've had, I'll share this with you real quick. I have a highlight video from high school that my dad's friend had made and I can hear my dad speaking in the clips. And he was just always so encouraging and so positive. A lot of parents in the stands were like yelling at their kids or yelling at the refs. (laughs) And my dad was just so, he was such a gentle man. He was a jolly giant truly, but I can hear him just encouraging me and cheering me on and, I thought that that would last forever, you know, but I should have just enjoyed it a little more while I had it. You are so wise beyond your years. I can't believe you're 26. I've got you. I'm an old soul. I'm you definitely are an old, old soul. soul. <laughs> you, you are, and I can tell that. And I, I love the wisdom that you're dropping for everyone today. Um, Thank you. Two more questions on, on your dad before I talk more about the book, because I'm just so mm-hmm. intrigued about this. What was his career? What, what, what industry occupation was he? So he was a personal trainer. He was actually my trainer, like strength and conditioning. I started with him when I was 13. And so, yeah, like I said, that was my workout guy. He was the healthiest person that I knew in my life. And none of us knew what ALS was. He just started losing muscle. I wonder if I ever met him. Interesting. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. He, a popular guy in Corona. So, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so the second trainer. question is about what you were just getting into ALS. Mm-hmm. Man, number one, I'm sorry about your loss. It sounds like you had more Thank of you. that in 25 years of your life than most have in a lifetime. Um, Man, right. What what lesson, I, and I hate to say it, you know, extract a lesson from ALS, but how did your perspective change, I guess, during this battle that he had? And how does it impact you today? with his battle. Yeah. 
I would say I learned that we are guaranteed. But I've taken so much for granted Preach. and not even realizing it, but just even waking up in the morning, taking that for granted, walking down the street, walking in my favorite city of Athens. I, we take so much for granted. Like I have legs, I have arms, I'm healthy and I'm able to move. So never taking that for granted. And we're only ex- allowed to experience people for a certain amount of time. And when God calls them home, it's just time for them to go home and just mm-hmm. learning to have peace with that. And that's something that I never really thought about, and especially my dad was the healthiest, literally the healthiest person that I ever knew. So just seeing how quickly someone can come and go, it's like, just enjoy the people that you have around you, enjoy the life that you have and make beautiful memories. Well, well, I never met your dad, I don't believe, unless he was at a fitness show that I may have been at. Uh, I can tell you this, I know his spirit and soul lives in you and it's so evident it's so evident that your soul is coming through this screen and through the audio right now. And I just say thank you um, for, for sharing this on the pod, obviously writing your book, Finding Balance. Talk more a couple of other um, tenants. You talk about gratitude and knowing your role and being still. What are a couple of the other parts of your book that really like, man, the listeners today have to know uh, this, this principle that I live by? Ooh, that's so hard for me. I mean, all the above, everything you just said, it's all break it down real brief. So being still, being still in the morning and just taking that time for yourself. For me, that's meditating, that's praying, that's journaling, just not being on my phone, one, and two, just kind of having that moment to start my day and really prime myself for the day ahead. Knowing your role is just knowing where you fit in, wherever you're at on your journey. And that can change from season to season. We go through different seasons of life, just like the seasons change around us. We go through different seasons as well. So just knowing where you are, knowing how you could serve and knowing how you could be a light in whichever environment that you're in. And even if you don't like the environment that you're in currently, that is just setting you up for the next environment that you're going to be in. We go through things to help other people with um, when we come out on the other side. So I would say those are um, some of the keys. I'm dropping all the gems. I need people I, to buy I, the book. <laughs> you're speaking my language now. Buy, you can buy the book. <laughs> How much time do you spend most mornings of the week, would you say, in solitude and prayer and in journaling? I would say 40 minutes to an hour. But I have my days where it's like, you know what, I'm going to just do 20 minutes. Or maybe it's just I'm just going to pray and it's just 10 minutes. Yeah. So yeah, I try to have that it's time just to prime myself. It's very much a routine for me now. Yeah. Do you share that in the book at all? The actual routine? Yes, Folks, absolutely. In the book. I, I can't wait to read it myself and hold in, in uh, this discussion. As you know, you've been hearing me talk about um, – uh, so many things, including the morning routine and evening routine. As you know, yeah. in the last several weeks, um, you know, I came out with my impact journal, the power of journaling, and uh, I love that talking about journaling. What is, what is your practice of journaling? And I'm going to sh- by the way, I'm going to send you my journal as well, Monique. But what, how do you how do you how do you journal now? Is it do you have a blank notebook or do you have prompts where you share certain like prompts in the morning? I personally don't use prompts. I have two journals. So one of my journals is just like a personal journal where I just write like day-to-day stuff. um, And I'll look back on it. It's like almost like a time capsule. Like I'll look back on different things that I wrote, my goals, my dreams, just day-to-day. And then I have my prayer journal where I write my prayers. I'll write prayers for other people and just different things like that. So I have two journals. I like that. Well, when I send you mine, the we I, when I this is the first time I've created it and shared it, uh, even though I've been journaling for decades now, uh, I combined it in the morning. I started off with how much quality sleep did I get last night? So if it's five six a.m. a.m. boom, and then the and the second thing is I am grateful for this this morning. Dot dot dot. Mm. You, know, you start with gratitude, and then the next question: yes. is, My morning prayers and intentions are for who? Ooh. And this way I combine the gratitude and prayers before my other prompts on my fitness goals and how I'm going to impact others today and my mindset and mantra. Um, but I find that a lot of people say, hey, I'm going to pray for you. That's cool. But what I like to do in my journal is actually write people's names down and visualize them and yep. speak like speak life and pray life into them versus, hey, I'm going to pray for you. No, I'm going to pray yeah. with you and I'm going to put you down in my mm. prayer journal. So when you, when, you, when, you, when, you get your, when you get your impact journal all in one, 
You're gonna, Can't you're gonna wait. It, it, it's going to come to Greece. This might be the first impact journal in Greece. I, I, you take a picture of it. I'm going to get you in Greece. Let's go. <laughs> I cannot wait. Thank you. That's such a blessing. Thank you. Um, so uh, finding balance, a playbook for wellness. And I know you share a lot of your story. Included, I know you, you included your, your pops a lot in there as well. Um, and I have a feeling this will be the first of several books uh, that you have as your, as your wise soul continues to grow. Oh, thank you. I do have a question about balance mm-hmm. book, the title of the book. Do you believe in balance? Can you find that? I totally, I totally believe in balance. I totally believe that you can create balance. There you go. You can find it. You can create it. You can maintain it. You can lose it, but you can always get it back to. Yeah. It's good because I've, I've, I've danced with this definition of balance for a long time saying, you know, life is my definition of balance is, well, we never achieve perfect balance until we're dead, yeah. meaning life is like an orchestra. Sometimes it's crazy yeah. and chaotic and busy and nutty. And there's other times where it's really soft and, and sweet and harmonious. Um, it's, the, it's the desire toward the fulfillment that you have in your life where you're happy. And that you're content. Yes. That is that is uh, balance, and I really it's like what peace. you said. That. Right in peace, isn't that we all want more peace. peace in our heart, right? So, uh, yes. folks, pick up the book "Finding Balance: A Playbook for Wellness." Uh, where can they get that? It's on my Amazon. website, mobilinks.com, and we're going to be coming to Amazon soon. So, hopefully, okay. by the time this drops, we'll be on Amazon. Amazon. And uh, I'll drop the website uh, in our show notes as well. And uh, a couple final questions. Monique, what would you tell your younger self? Mm. Your younger self. And I, I feel say like younger, I'm talking like a teen. A teen. Okay. And you said, I you feel said like- earlier about grace, which I like, but I'm just curious. I, I really want to speak to, to a young gal or guy who might be listening in today. Absolutely. I feel like that always changes for me and it changes based on where I'm at in the moment, what I feel in my spirit, what I feel in my soul in the moment. And at the moment, if I could tell my teen self anything, I would say, take the pressure off and just enjoy the ride. Like Mm -hmm. enjoy the view on the way up the climb up the mountain, not just when you get to the top. How about for you, social media, Say, you know, mm-hmm. take the pressure off. I'm not just saying to teens, but even for you as an athlete, pro athlete, you got a great following. Um, how, what's your dance and relationship with your phone, social media of when you turn it off? And I know you talk about that in balance, by the way, in finding that. Yeah. But just talk about that because I'm curious how you do that. Because if you don't, you can really get messed up in the head and not have balance. <laughs> Man, who are you telling? I've been there so many times. I still go through that. So See, for me, I post and I ghost, like, I literally will do that, posting ghosts, you know, I'll dedicate time to social media, Yeah, posting ghosts, um, I'll let you use that, (laughs) it sounds Um, like a way to be down in this, on on, on the block, you like, (laughs) post and ghost, like, you're gonna post up, hit hit, hit it, and then go, ghost it, exactly, no, I'll dedicate time for social media, you know, it's, it's an important part of my job, um, who I am, and I like keeping up with my friends, but I have been over overstimulated so many times. I hate how that makes me feel. So just being aware, like literally, I hope this book helps people to be more in tune with their, their spirit and just be more mm-hmm. introspective. And I feel like I'm a very introspective type of person. So I, I listen to my soul. My soul is telling me like, it's too much. Like, can we go outside? And sometimes I just leave my phone and I go for a walk. And that's, I feel like, those are the times that I have the best conversations with God or just with myself and just being in that solitude. So that's balance in itself. It's just all about listening to yourself, understanding what brings you that peace and what doesn't bring you that peace, doing more of what makes you feel good and less of what doesn't. Yeah. Well, I just started following you on Instagram, Monique, Monique.Billings, Monique.Billings on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Guys, follow her, follow her because when we talk about, you know, you are, like the people you surround yourself with and who you're learning from, Monique is putting some great inspiration and motivation into the world. You're not going to see stuff that um, is going to fill your head with trash. This is the best mm-hmm. of the best stuff from fitness and health and faith and mindset. Mm-hmm. And she's sharing violence. So I want to thank you for showing up and being a mentor to so many 
I'll say young gals, but athletes and parents, I mean, all of it, like you're, mm-hmm. you're such a great role model. Um, follow Monique, Monique.Billings um, on, on Instagram. Again, I'll put that in our show notes as well uh, on that. I've got to ask you, <laughs> not that you think about it because you're 26, but yeah. after your basketball career is over in like, I don't know, 10, 15 years, what is yeah. the next iteration of Monique? Do you know that yet? Or are you so focused on the now? Or what are your dreams as a Renaissance woman to change the world? <laughs> I see it going in so many different ways and so many different directions. I want to be on TV, though. Like I said, Tyra was my inspiration forever. So I want to be a television personality. I'm already doing broadcasting, which is a huge blessing. But like, okay, I'm going to say this. This is big dreams that scare me. I want to host the ESPYs. I want to be a host on America's Got Talent, on Dancing with the Stars. Like, those are the type of shows that I'm trying to host one day. I love it. (laughs) Yes. This is a God-sized dream. Uh, And when it happens. I'm going to come back to this podcast and be like, I said it on this okay, day. And it. It. Now, now, because you said it, I'm sending you that as well. This yes. is 2023 God size dreams planner. Oh that has got all my questions in there that are going to help wow. you potentiate this. Why? Because I guarantee there's someone right now listening who is associated with ESPN or ESPN uh-huh. or the, the SPs. And, um, yeah. This is how the world works. Let's and go. There. And, you know, Monique, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being you and for living life and, and not only being a great role model, but a great daughter and a great just person and human being who's spreading light and love into the world. Uh, last question. This is the impact show. Impact is about legacy. But you've talked about your faith several times. How has your faith mm-hmm. played a role in who you are today and your legacy and life overall? Man, God is my everything. And so I know that I'm a light. I know that I'm put on this earth to be a light and just to serve God in any way that I can. And that's been my foundation since I was a young girl. So I grew up Christian. Thankfully, like I kept my faith and I just want to continue spreading faith um, around the world because we global. So anywhere that I go, I try to... I love faith you. as much I, as I can. I love you. This is listen. I, I don't know what, what I don't know what your schedule is like, but in 2023, we're going to do something together. And maybe it's just me yes. being inside you, like that crazy dude over there yelling, "Post and ghost, post and ghost." <laughs> <laughs> like that's TD. <laughs> or maybe signature it's a, move. You're you're, you're going to know. Oh, Trust that would me. be a blessing. I'm going to get with Volano, and Thank- we're going to we're going to be heckling. In a good way. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for your platform and just your light that you're shining. Just allowing, just giving me a moment to shine on your platform. It's just a blessing. So thank you. Keep up the great work. Go enjoy Athens, Greece. I appreciate uh, the the conversation, the fact that you joined in. And I don't even know, it's probably late at night there over in Greece. And uh, here you are, you know, joining in on the Impact Show. Thank you for what you do. I can't wait to to follow you. You've got a new fan and friend here. Um, Folks, follow Monique Billings. Uh, Pick up her book, Finding Balance. It's coming out on Amazon. Check it out. Uh, As always, uh, that's what we love to do. So Monique Billings, Thank you. Have a great day. God bless you. Thank God bless you. you. God bless you. God bless you too. Thank you. Later. Man, oh man, what a conversation today with Monique Billings. What a woman. 26 years old and WNBA superstar. And when you talk about a Renaissance woman, not only playing for the Atlanta Dream and over in Istanbul, Turkey, lived in 10 cities. Uh, she is an author. She is on air, on TV. She's This woman, keep an eye on her. Make sure you follow her. Um, my favorite part of the whole entire conversation as a dad was her talking about her father. I don't know what it is, but just hearing a daughter talk about her dad and what he meant to her and their relationship. And then after, you know, he passed just a year ago, interesting that I'm recording this on the day that is his heavenly birthday. Um, Unbelievable, unbelievable uh, how God works and what a blessing she is to the world, literally the world, not just this country, but to the world because she's playing hoops and evangelizing all over, uh, all over the place. So, uh, Monique Billings, again, thank you. Follow her, Monique.Billings on Instagram. Uh, I've got her website and everything in 
in the, the show notes. And of course, check out Amazon, her book, Finding Balance, A Playbook for Wellness. Thank you, Monique. Thank you for listening. As always, if you found value in today's conversation right now, snap a picture. Let me hear a little snap of the picture. And then please share it on your social media. You can tag me at Todd Durkin and Monique.Billings on your Instagram stories. And uh, this is going to light the world up with even more positivity, hope, and uh, people need to hear this episode. So uh, thank you for the shares. As always, remember, until next time, you got to train hard, eat right, live inspired, and go create impact. Impact.